Good morning, folks. We're in Tier 1 Wait and See mode here. We've got space weather on the way, which we'll discuss more at the end. Let's get the most recent looks at our star here, then weather and science. At spaceweathernews.com, we find the last 24 hours on the sun were quiet, provided you consider a massive coronal hole quiet. This is just a shade under the largest coronal holes we saw last sunspot cycle, and it should give strong solar winds at Earth as we begin eyeing the active region turning in on the north. Those large arching fields should be visible in another day or two. The sun's activity surge continues, and there may be more coming, but let's now take a moment to head to some weather where all models now pretty much agree after their wild disagreements 24 hours ago. This is the track of the cyclone just west of India now, not going to be very nice where it hits. Prayers in this direction. If you missed it last night, there had been so much new science on the galactic current sheet and recent nearby Nova that it needed a special update video. If you didn't catch that one last night, there's a link right below this video. New listeners, there's also the best catch-up videos linked under that one. A quick note on popular media, you may have seen this in the push goes beyond the stratosphere as two new papers show both that and the collapse of the mesosphere above it. Both blame carbon emissions, greenhouse gases, but the problem is, they tried that already, when this was first noticed a decade ago. Back then, they realized it was the sun as the driver, and the greenhouse gases were a tiny fraction of the story. Does anyone want to guess how much they put the sun into these study models? Yeah. By the way, for those new papers to be right, we'd need ultra-high sensitivity in climate, and it's been a huge point of the peer-reviewed literature that high sensitivity lives in Fantasia. New paper here suggesting the same by looking at cloud uncertainties, the other major problem in need of a fix. Two more up next on efforts to predict space weather, when it will be too much for Earth to handle, both on an individual basis and in terms of long-term uptick forecasting. Of course, we've recently had reason to think it won't take quite so much for the sun to take it all away. In another special video earlier in the week, we described how big geomagnetic effects occurred from relatively weak space weather, you can find a lot of literature on the unexpectedness of the August 2018 geomagnetic storms as well, off such puny space weather, and we're left wondering if Earth's ongoing magnetic excursion has left us more vulnerable to these solar eruptions. We've got another puny one on the way. It is due to impact today. Normally, it would barely be worth mentioning it's so small. That massive coronal hole we discussed should be a bit strong, and that will be impacting in another day or so afterwards, as those northern sunspots are coming into view. Folks, if on top of the unexpectedly strong effects in 2018 and earlier this week, the next several space weather events surprise, where geomagnetic response is excessive compared to the solar wind data, we may need to start thinking differently about our chances of getting through sunspot maximum here the next few years. We greatly appreciate your support, this was a major topic on yesterday's Fly on the Wall podcast for website members at suspiciousobservers.org. Check out those special videos if you missed them. Both are linked below. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.